We're Jimmy and Natalie, and we left our comfy camper van to live out of backpacks while traveling around Europe. Last week, we managed to survive two nights in an old Cold War bunker in the Czech Republic. And now, we get to explore the city of Brno. When I was getting my hair cut a few weeks ago, before we even left on this trip, I mentioned to my hairdresser that we were thinking about going to the Czech Republic. And she said, oh yeah, Prague. And uh, I realized, I think a lot of people, us included, when they hear the Czech Republic, they pretty much just think there's only one thing to go see there, and that's Prague. But the Czech Republic has a second city, as it's been nicknamed, and it's called Brno. So we have got a healthy layer of sunscreen on, and it's about a 20 minute walk to the center of Brno. So it's about 30 minutes till 11, and the first place we wanted to come is this astronomical clock. Something special happens at 11 a.m. every day, and that is there's this uh, crystal orb that drops from the top and is randomly spat out in one of these slots. And so um, usually a crowd forms and we all see who can get the one orb per day. So as far as I can tell, there's four slots and we're standing right next to one of them. So I think we've got a 25% chance of grabbing it so far. As long as no one pushier than us comes along. It fell a little bit. This astronomical clock is a little bit controversial. Um, it was intended to resemble a bullet, but it. some people say it kind of missed the mark on that. Um, some people really like it and some people don't really, but it was basically put up to commemorate in 1645, towards the end of the Thirty Years' War, there was a Swedish occupation of Brno. And the Swedes had been here for about three months and they said that if they hadn't taken the city by noon of this particular day, that they were gonna give up and leave. Um, so Brno was actually pretty close to falling, but the people of Brno changed the clock in the town square to reflect that it was an hour earlier. So it chimed noon when it was actually just 11 a.m., which is what ended up pretty much saving them from falling to the Swedish army. Uh, so it's a pretty interesting story, and they commemorated this, and that's why the glass marble falls down at 11 a.m. Seems like kind of a random time, but it's actually pretty significant. So as far as we can tell, you can hear the glass orb falling every 15 minutes. So we've heard it twice so far. So we've got 15 more minutes before it comes out one of these spots. I'm defending this tooth and nail. I'm not gonna let anyone up here. I don't wanna lose our chance. Yeah, this whole thing is a little bit more cutthroat than I thought. Like, we've got like kids coming up trying to like squeeze in between the two of us and like we're just trying to stand our ground here. Mm -hmm. This is our last chance to get this thing because we're leaving tomorrow morning before 11. So my new strategy is I've wedged my arm deep into the machine so that no one can cut in. <laughs> we can't take credit for it because we've seen a couple of other people doing that and it just seems like the best way to make sure someone doesn't come in and, and cut in and grab it from you because uh, there's a lot of people watching. Because yeah. uh, the year this was constructed, um, when the first ball came out, people actually missed it and it fell back into the machine. So I don't want that to happen this time. So the very first one, no one got it. All right, I think I this is it. it. I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm so focused. Oh, uh, where is it? Did they get it? Did someone get it? I think someone got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see it right there. Yeah, oh really? Oh yeah, it's in a That's honestly a little disappointing. I know. We waited for an hour for that. That's okay. It was fun though. It's fun like just having the anticipation, feeling it roll down, just being part of it. Um, it would have been cool to have the trophy, but you know what? That kind of goes against the minimalist mindset <laughs> with backpacking anyway, so maybe it's for the best. I know you're not supposed to carry rocks with you when you backpack, but I would have carried this rock. Final thing to note before we leave is that this is an astronomical clock, and it's supposed to tell the time um, up at the top, but 
it's really, really hard to see. So we heard about a tip of how to read the clock. So to tell the time, what you need to do is stand in the middle of the square and at the top of the clock, you can see there's like a section where it should show some numbers, but it's really difficult to see. So what you wanna do is stand about right here, face the clock, and then you turn about 90 degrees and you go look at that clock over there. And that'll tell you the real time. <laughs> Even though we're in the middle of the center city, there's something here that's a little unique that we really want to go check out. It's a butterfly house. All right, judging from the outside, I think this is meant more for kids but we're not gonna let that stop us from having fun. Butterflies are for all ages. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them look like really creepy. <laughs> Which one? I've heard of this kind before. I've just never seen one in real life, but I think they're built so that like when they open up the wings, it looks like they have eyes, like owl eyes to yeah. try and scare off predators. I'm like really kind of nervous. I don't. <laughs> I'm scared if one lands on me that I'm gonna instinctively swat at it and I really really don't want to do that. You better not do that. They're gonna kick us out. I know. I think my new goal at this point is to get one to land on Natalie. Oh, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I do. All right, now hold your hands out like a tree. There you go. They don't like you very much. I know. They're literally they everywhere know. but where you are right now. <laughs> They're smart. <laughs> What's wrong? That one's really, really huge. Oh my god. <laughs> I might be sick. <laughs> like that. This is my hand for comparison. I'm not gonna touch it. You're gonna get him to fly off. <laughs> I've heard that butterflies have tongues that are like a straw, so they like unravel them and then they suck things through the middle of their tongue. That's what they're gonna do to you when they land on your mm. head. Mm -mm. <laughs> now we wait. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, one just went in front of the camera. Feels like there's one on my neck, but that's, I'm, that's probably just a sweat. Yeah, I don't know if they're gonna land on you. If you're wondering what it's like in here, the best way I can describe it is, it's just like a sauna. It's like a tropical jungle. Yeah, it's really hot and really humid. You can probably see the sweat pouring down on our faces. I'm sure it's really comfortable for the butterflies, but. Yeah, they probably love it here. They're all really active. Well, there's enough of them active to where it looks like they're all really active. Yeah. Pretty much every leaf you look at, there's one hiding like on the fern. Yeah, it's crazy how many there are. I am not afraid of butterflies, but- Are uh, you sure? I wasn't afraid of butterflies. Okay. I might have unlocked a new fear. <laughs> I just think they're cool. Thanks. All right, well, that was really, really fun. And uh, it definitely is not just for kids. <laughs> there's a lot of adults in there too. So for lunch today, we went to Lidl's, which has quickly become like our number one staple for food because it's really cheap. We got three of these wraps and then we'll usually get like a cold drink to go with it since it's pretty hot here. Um, but all in all, this cost about 168 Czech crowns. That's cold. Yeah, and it's all cold. I don't know how Natalie found out about this, but we're doing a complete 180 from the Butterfly Conservatory, and we're gonna go check out the uh, second largest ossuary in Europe. It's underneath a church. Oh, they weren't kidding about the candles. Yeah, it's so dark in here, except for the candles lining the floor. These remains are from the 1700s. They were rediscovered in 2001. 
they disinfected and rearranged everything, decided to turn it into an exhibition. So they had to remove all the human remains. They buried some of them in a cemetery and they returned about 10 or 15% of what they originally found back in here as part of the exhibition. So most of this has been changed and it's not in the original form that it was found in, but I think they had to disinfect it to make everything like safe to go and explore. So this definitely looks like the main room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I keep like seeing things out of the corner of my eye and assuming that it's brick and it's not brick. So an ossuary is defined as anything such as a box, chest, room, or building that holds skeletal remains. Os means bone in Latin, so it makes sense. This is the second largest ossuary in Europe, second only to the catacombs of Paris. They estimate that there's over 50,000 people's remains in this crypt. Yeah, which sounds wildly impressive. Um, we did look it up and the catacombs of Paris have over 6 million. Um, so it's not really a close second, but yeah. it's second. It's still very impressive. Like Natalie said, most of these had to be removed at some point uh, for the cleaning, uh, but there is one section behind a glass pane that has been untouched. It really just keeps on going back. I don't know if you've seen up here, Nat, but this entire room is filled as tall as I am really? with remains. Yeah. I think I'm too short to really appreciate it. I know it's a little weird showing all this on camera, but Brno has such a deep history. I think it's really interesting to try to capture that. Um, so I hope people aren't too squeamish from this part, but I do find it really interesting and um, I feel like we're learning a lot from it as well. So an ossuary is not usually the first resting place of the remains. They're usually buried in a cemetery or something similar until it gets too full. And that's when the remains are removed and then stored in these mass catacombs. All right, what made you more uncomfortable? That or the butterflies? Probably the butterflies. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Our next stop is the Cathedral of St. Peter and Paul, which has been nicknamed Petrov by the locals because it sits at the top of Petrov Hill overlooking the city of Brno. It's a Roman Catholic cathedral with 14th century Gothic architecture on the outside and a Baroque style interior. Although there have been several different buildings on this site over the years, there has been a church in some form in this site since the 11th century. <laughs> That's that was so really cool. nice. I could pull up a chair right there. <laughs> So we stopped at what has become our favorite place in Brno for some falafel tortillas one last time. I don't think we've really shown much of this place on the vlog, but we've been four times. And this time, the uh, nice lady who works at the counter recognized us and said, falafel tortillas, and we just said yes. So she, <laughs> she knows our order now. <laughs> So when we go to buy these, the person we buy them from doesn't know any English and we don't know any Czech. Uh, so it's hard to communicate. So, but we figured out how to ask for everything, which is great, but uh, I'm not a big fan of the red cabbage. It's a lot easier and more fun to travel if you're not a picky eater. So it's really nice you go to these places and you just say everything and you just point at all of it and they yeah. kind of know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hand gestures go a long way here. Very good deal. <laughs> All right, rise and shine. We got a bus to catch. Oh. Oh. Country number three. <laughs> we have a one hour layover in Austria before we go to Romania. And just to be clear, we're passing through the country of Austria on our way to Romania. 
So that's why we're not counting Austria as our next country. Our official third country will be the country of Romania. Yay! <laughs> So this is by far the longest travel day that we've had yet. We just rode and got off of a one and a half hour bus from Brno to Vienna, Austria, which is where we are now. We've only got a 30 minute layover until we need to catch our big nine hour bus that's gonna take us all the way to Timisoro, Romania. Yeah, um. so we made good use of it. <laughs> and we picked up five different sandwiches from a nearby cafe. So we should be set for lunch and dinner on this next bus. I know you can't see me very well because of the sun, but um, this isn't the best place for an update anyway because uh, our bus is broken down. So we're stuck in the middle of Hungary right now, um, about two hours away from Budapest, and uh, we're just all out here on the side of the road. And it's like 100 degrees, so I'll keep you updated. Well, we're still broken down, but Natalie's found something to entertain herself with. I found us a new way to get to Romania. Hopefully. Well, that was one wild experience. <laughs> it's midnight. <laughs> yeah, so we are two hours late. The little mechanic shop experience we had was apparently because um, the left back tire blew, <laughs> which we were sitting right on it, so I don't know how we missed that. That's the power of dualies. such a nice apartment and I haven't even told you the best part I guess this might be lost on you if you're just watching this at home but uh, this place has air conditioning which is a big deal for me and Jimmy right now I'm so happy I know. <laughs> and this place is like less than 50 US dollars per night it's right in the middle of the square and it's like probably the nicest place we've stayed so far This is the first bed in weeks that has not been a twin size bed. This is so nice. This is heaven. All right, well, um, it's like 1 a.m. We're gonna go explore Romania tomorrow in the town of uh, Timisora, which I heard it pronounced three different ways on the bus. Yeah, Timisara. Yeah, so is... I'm really gonna have to look that up. Yeah, we'll work on it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just pick you back up next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.